Okay. So, hello everyone. I'm Guan An, and a student from Purdue University. Today I'm going to talk about the paper refunctionalization of abstract, abstract machines. So, to begin, I would like to start from Reynolds' seminar paper on definitional interpreters for higher order program languages. So, in this paper, Reynolds categorized many different kinds of interpreters according to two dimensions. The first one is whether the interpreter is using higher order functions to represent function values. And the second dimension is whether the interpreters, whether the order of application of the defining language is depending on the defining language. So we have four categories. And moreover, Reynolds identified a transformation that transforms higher order functions into first order data types um, along with their dispatching functions. So it is called defunctionalization. And later, Oliver Dunley and many of his collaborators retraced the Reynolds approach and rediscovered a left inverse transformation of defunctionalization, which is called refunctionalization. And the idea is to transform the first order data types back to higher order functions. Okay? So that's a basic idea of defunctionalization and refunctionalization. And these two transformations can be used to construct a functional correspondence between small step abstract machines and big step evaluators. So the idea is not only applying these two transformations to function values or closures, we can also apply this to control flow. Okay. So for example, if we refunctionalize a CEK machine, we will obtain a CTS interpreter. So for example, this is a definition of the CEK machine. And it is called CEK machine because it's a state transition system. And the definition of state has three components. The first one is uh, this expert, which is basically the abstract syntax tree of the program. And the second one, environment, is a mapping from variable to values. And the third one, this count here, is a context. And it is defined as a data type, which has three variants. So the first one is a, it's a hot, meaning that, OK, the context is empty and there is no more computation to do. Okay. And the second one is an argument uh, context, meaning that this context holds an expression which appears at an argument position and waiting for evaluation at the next step. Okay. The third context is a function context, meaning that there is a lambda term already been evaluated. And the next thing you need to do is to apply the argument into this lambda term or the closure because there's also an environment. Okay. So this is the, the basic idea of evaluation context. And here in CEK machine, it is defined as a first order data type. Okay. If we refunctionalize the CEK machine, we will obtain a CPS interpreter. Basically, it's a single recursive function, which is an eval here. And we can see the third argument of this eval function is a higher order function, which takes the value result from the previous computation and do its job inside of the harder function, which is, a, which is the idea of continuation. So the, the insight of this refunctionalization and defunctionalization shows that actually refunctionalize the evaluation context are just higher order, fun, higher order continuations. And also defunctionalize the continuations are just the first order evaluation context. Okay? But moreover, we can also transform back to direct cell from the CPS interpreter and obtain a direct cell definition interpreter. Okay, so that's a correspondence between abstract machine and evaluators. So this function correspondence actually shows a, a systematic way to interderive many of the independently designed abstract, uh, concrete semantic artifacts. Okay, they are looks different, but they can be connected in some way. And refunctionalization and defunctionalization plays a very important role in this interderivation. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is a little bit more higher level, that is an uh, abstract interpreter. So in ICFP 2010, uh, David Hall and Matt Matt had a paper on abstract abstract machine, which is a methodology to construct uh, some small step abstract interpreters given some concrete interpreters, so we can do some stack analysis. So the idea is to apply some a combination of abstractions to the state, so we will obtain a finite state space. And also, the state transition relation becomes non-deterministic. That is, 
given a state, it may have multiple successor states. Okay. This is a very systematic way to construct abstract interpreters. And in last year's ISFP, David Zaras has another paper applying basically the same idea to definition interpreters. And we're opting a big step compositional and monadic definition interpreters. Okay. So now we have this nice diagram. So in the bottom, we have a functional correspondence between concrete abstract machine and evaluators. And we can apply uh, something, some abstractions to both of them and apply two different style of abstract interpreters. So now the question is to ask, is there any uh, uh, functional correspondence between these abstract semantic artifacts? So this is the topic of our paper, and our answer is yes. So in the paper, we provide a constructive uh, answer to the push down from transforming from push down abstract, abstract, abstract machine to abstract definition and interpreters. And in the middle of this transformation, we will obtain a refunctionalized uh, abstract interpreter, which has two continuations. Okay. And finally, we transform back to direct style by using delimited control operators. Okay. So I will start from the first transformation, which, which is called linearization. So to begin before that, uh, let me briefly recap a little bit on how classic AM works. So in a concrete abstract machine, for example, a CEK machine, the state transition is deterministic. So there is a unique successor state. But in abstract abstract machine, the state transition becomes non-deterministic. That is, you may have multiple successor states. So for example, we have a fun function application here, f and v, so v is applied into f, but f here is a variable. So it may actually point to multiple target closures and we need to explore all of these closures. In, in this figure, there are three successor states, and the AM works as there is another work list, which is a common algorithm in abstract implementation. So the work list contains some to-do states, and there is another driver function that controls how we use this work list. Okay? So the driver function actually keep popping a state from this work list and asking like, two questions. The first one is, have I saw this state before? So if yes, then I can keep, skip this one and move on to the next state in the work list. Otherwise, the driver function will get the successors from the state of this in this to-do list and add the successors back to the to-do list. So this driver function keeps doing this again and again until there is no more, no more state in the to-do list. And the whole algorithm is over. Okay. But now the linear transform linearization actually transform the state transition to be deterministic. So by introducing another meta continuation. So this meta continuation controls over all the non-deterministic choices. Okay. So the idea is we just pick one state as the successor state. But we still have a couple of other choices. And we save the information at this fork point into the meta continuation. Okay, so we have a larger state, which is a blue state, and it contains some information on how to construct this orange state so that we can come back later and construct them. So we will keep working on this state permanently until we reach an end at this computation path. Okay, but remembering that we still have some information we didn't explore. So we can come back later to, to construct a, a new state from the recent fork point. So think about it as a stack. We keep pushing something into it, and we're popping, popping when we reach the end of the computation. Okay. So we will do this and until we reach the, the ultimate end, which means we have no more states and no more useful information in the meta continuation. Now the driver function's job is actually quite simple because the transition is deterministic. It just needs to ask, okay, do you have a successor and do this again and again? Okay. So now the linearization is a transformation actually makes this abstract state contains two continuations. So the first one is this count here, which is representing the stack structure of the object program. And the m count 
which is we just added, is a meta continuation controls over non-deterministic closure choices. And these two continuations, right now, they are both represented by first order data types. Okay. So the next two transformations are lightweight fusion and disentanglement. So these two transformations are relatively easy. So they are, the, the, the goal of these two are just to further tweak the form of the abstract interpreter and expose the continuations and their dispatching function explicitly. So the fusion just merges the step function, which, gives, which, are, which is a function that gives you the successor state, and the driver function, which continue recursively applying this step function. And fusion merges this two function into a single one. So now our abstract interpreter just has one single recursive function do, the, do its job. And then this entanglement to, is to lift the code blocks that handles different cases of this continuation into another two top-level functions. Because we have two continuations, so we will have two, another handling function for these two data types. Okay. So which is now the top level of the abstract interpreter is this A eval, meaning that's the abstract evaluation. And the continue and M continue are two dispatching functions for different data type continuations. Okay. So after these three steps, we actually obtained a defunctionalized form of abstract abstract machine. By defunctionalized, I mean the continuation and the dispatching function are explicitly exposed so that we can apply the refunctionalization. The idea is just to refunctionalize these two data type, data type referencing continuations back to higher order functions. And after this transformation, we will obtain an abstract interpreter with two continuations, two higher order continuations. So we can actually conclude the type of the higher order continuations by seeing the first order data type continuations. So the, in the definition of state, the count and the count is elemented, and we have another count C, start with C, and M count, and they are both functions. But also know that in the type of the, the normal continuation, we have additional argument that takes a meta continuation. So meaning that even though this is a continuation, but this continuation also has another continuation, which is the thing it needs to do after its job. Okay. So this is a shape of the transform the program, the abstract interpreter. I cannot put all the details on the slide, but we can see on the top of the slide, there are two arguments of eval, which is the K and MK here. And in the main body of the, the case of, of interpreting that expression, we will construct a new K and new MK on the fly. So the new K is a function that takes the result of the application, which is the right-hand side of the let expression, and continue evaluating the main body, which is the E here of the let expression. And the new MK is a meta continuation that controls over all the possible closure choices when we have non-determinist choices. And we provide new K and new MK here to the next call of e, a eval. Okay. Now, we already have a refunctionalized AM. The next thing is to transform back to direct style. So we actually have three choices. The first one is, since there are two continuations, we can use uh, side effects and assignments to do this, but this is not functional programming. And the second one is to use monad, which is also the approach that uh, David used in the SFP for last year. But we also know that monads and the relations to, to the delimited continuations. And any monads can be represented by some delimited continuations. So here we take the third approach and to use shift and reset operators. And shift is to use the, to capture the continuations in a direct style. And reset is used to set, set up the boundary of the continuation. And after this, our abstract, inter abstract interpreter looks almost no difference to a concrete interpreter. But there are still some difference we will see. So this is the code. And the notable difference here is the use of a function called choices. So choices, I didn't show the implementation here. But ch internally, choices is implemented using shift. And the shift operator will 
capture the rest of the computation, provide into a, a fold function, and the rest of the continuation is shown in this blue box. Okay, this blue box is what we need to do for every closure. That is the same as the same in the concrete interpreter. Okay, so now our abstract interpreter is totally in direct style. But also know that we are still something we didn't do. So our, the first thing is our abstract interpreter may still not terminate under some cases. That is because we are using a push down model for both the first order and higher order continuations. And simply enumerating the possible states is not good enough to ensure the termination. But we can ap apply the coin depth catching uh, as shown in the original abstracting definition interpreters, which easily solve this problem. And it's not hard to, to implement that. And the second one is our AUL function returns a set of states. And it also used a state representation of the program. But that makes it not looks like an interpreter. But we can first lift the, the field of a state definition into the argument of this AEVAL function, and also let the AEVAL function returns a set of final possible values instead of collected states. Okay. So we have seen the other transformation. So to conclude, let me briefly review what we have done. The first one is the linearization that makes the non determinist choices to be another meta continuation explicitly. And the following three are lightweight fusion, disentanglement, and refunctionalization. And these three are actually existing techniques for constructing concrete functional correspondence. But here, we use the three to, uh, to apply the case where we have two continuations. And finally, we transform back to director style using uh, delimited control operators. So, um, and the reverse direction is also possible, and we briefly discussed it in the paper. So we have shown the functional correspondence between a abstract software machine and the abstract definition interpreters. And my talk is over. Thanks for listening. Can you talk about the performance of the resulting definitional interpreter? How does it relate to the performance of the original abstract machine? Uh, we didn't evaluate the performance in the paper, but according to other previous paper on um, comparing the big step abstract interpreter and the small step abstract interpreter, usually the big step is a little bit faster than abstract interpreter because you don't need to construct the intermediate state. You just need to use the uh, stack structure in the defining language to do, to do other things. Are the translation steps here that you've described mechanized, or is this a hand-done translation at this point? Um, it is mechanized, but not automatically can be done. At least we didn't show in an automatic way. Yeah. Thank you again. Mm -hmm.